Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel Blue House Vintage. Today I'm going to take you to the local thrift store near me which is a value village and I think down in the states if anyone's joining us from the states uh, they call it savers down there so up here it's value village so I'm going to take you for a little bit of a thrift trip I'm going to head straight over actually to I usually start with either like the home decor, like vases and whatnot, or furniture. But today I'm kind of on a mission um, looking for a magazine as a stocking stuffer. So I'm going to take you over there to see what I can find. I'm looking for one for my dad, but it seems there's mainly just a lot of really old National Geographics or cooking, you know, that type of thing. So not really anything he's super interested in but I did end up finding a little vintage stocking stuffer for my mom so um, just a sewing book on pillows so I picked that up and I think that was a dollar 49 and I ended up finding <laughs> let me know in the comments if you would have picked this up it's like a um, memorabilia for the royal family so in Canada, we, we are a member of the Commonwealth, so we, we do have uh, a lot of ties to the monarchy. So I don't collect um, any Diana stuff, so I ended up putting it back, but I was tempting to get it. They were 99 cents. So let me know in the comments if I messed up and I could have uh, sold these. She's so beautiful. Look at that. I kind of regret not getting it, but it's not really what I what I collect and what I sell. So I'm trying to be more selective. It's difficult. I did find a lot in the blankets section today because I am still on a mission to find material or old blankets to make into a coat. I'm particularly looking for... Uh, old quilt to make it to quilt coat. I did end up finding something which you'll see later which um, is going to make a great coat not quite what I had in mind of a vintage quilt coat but it's still going to make a great coat. This one I was tempted to get that but it ended up having a stain on it so I decided not to get it and this tapestry was interesting as well. Uh, the color is really beautiful but um, I've never sold any tapestries before. I don't know how well they they do. If you know, um, please feel free to enlighten me in the comments if people are really buying these. Um, I just shy away from buying something if I don't if I wouldn't also keep it in my house because if it doesn't sell, then I'm kind of stuck with it. So let me know what your thoughts are. Do you collect tapestries? Do you sell them? I thought this one had a really cute fringe on it, but it was 20 bucks, right? So it's kind of a lot to invest in something when you're not really sure what the result would be. And then there are some really nice neutral blankets too. That one ended up having a stain, so I didn't pick that up. And I also love color.
loved this embroidery, but it's such a shame it had um, a stain on it. I could have like tried to get it out or cut around it, framed around it, but I decided it wasn't worth it for the price. This deer was really funny. Let me know if you would have thrifted this super soft blanket with the psycho deer on it. <laughs> I think that deer's face is really scary. What do you guys think? Let me know. And then here's the blanket that I ended up getting. So it's pretty plain, but that's because it's camel hair. So it's camel wool. So it's super, super soft. And I ended up getting it, I feel like I'm going to transform it into a long coat, which hopefully I'll be able to show you some of that process. And I feel like it's going to be a really nice, really soft kind of all around coat that here in Calgary you could wear all through the winter, all through, you know, the fall, early spring, and it would be just an awesome coat. So... I decided to pick that up pretty expensive, but I mean, that's kind of the going rate for a giant um, wool blanket like that. get into the craft section so it seemed to be chock full of embroidery kits so I am looking for intact embroidery kits like vintage obviously um, because they do sell and uh, they're I find them kind of interesting so I don't want the ones there was a lot of ones that were not in like original packaging because I'm not an embroiderer I don't even know if just looking at it I wouldn't even know if anything was missing from that kit so I would not want to sell those just in case they're not complete and I, I feel like they, they're not they don't hold their value either I think it has to be sealed so I did end up finding one that is sealed which you'll see coming up and it has the most cool design um, so I think someone's really, really, really going to like this. Um, so this is it here, Creative Circle um, from, I think it's 1984. And it's the design on the left, which is the sailboat sailing away into the sunset. And look at those colors. I can't believe that I found that. I think that one's going to be a big hit. That was beautiful. So you're going to see me kind of rifling through to try to see if I can find any more, you know, intact kits. Obviously, somebody had donated a bunch of their old um, embroidery stuff and it had all ended up in the store at the same time. I did see some brand new curtains too, but I mean, look at the price. I think it was like 30 bucks for, for that curtain set. So... Um, the thrift sure knows how to charge these days. I think they forget that we have to rifle through all these bins um, to try to find their used product that was donated. So it's kind of um, grinds my gears sometimes that they, they receive this for free. Um, at Value Village here, uh, this in, in Canada at least, they don't, none of the proceeds go to charity. Um, it, when, when you donate, they say that they donate to charity 
So the donations help, but when they sell it, it's completely for profit. So I find that to be a little bit um, distasteful when they are pricing items the way that they do. Um, it's particularly like when they're, they have ant antiques or, you know, Pyrex or anything like that. And they, they price them as if they were a curated vintage shop. And, you know, I just find that distasteful, you know, they're not a curated vintage shop. They got this, the items for free. It's a thrift store. The experience is, is not the same as if you were to go to an antique store, right? Where you have somebody helping you. They've curated the, the products. They're av the showroom is beautiful. There's soft music playing. It's an amazing, incredible shopping experience. And that's why those shops can charge what they do. Um, it, the thrift store is not the same. So that's my rant of the day. Thanks for listening. But let me know what you think of that. You know, what are the prices like in, in your area? Are you seeing them to be kind of crazy at times? Uh, where are you finding the best prices? And uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that. Because I know that that's been kind of an issue that a lot of people have been having. And maybe it's because of people coming in and buying stuff and reselling it. So uh, maybe... I'm part of the problem. So here you'll see, I'm just rooting around in that bin. It's just the never ending bin of somebody's old <laughs> embroidery. <laughs> so, and it's hard to do it one handed. I'm trying to film for you guys and it takes me probably like, it takes me way longer to sort through a bin like this when I'm trying to film it. But here I've given up and I'm headed into the furniture and lamp section so you'll see coming up here what I ended up finding <laughs> uh, which I hope uh oh it looks like I'm gonna go and look at some more linens first but I, I think I'm gonna find this uh this one item here right away and you guys have to let me know what you think of it would you have thrifted it is it amazing or is it hideous I am torn I am torn I did buy it I think it's amazing. I personally think someone else is going to think it's amazing. I do intend on selling it and I think it was a great find, but I did take a risk on it. I didn't even test it. <laughs> I realized when I left, um, here it is. There it is. So this lamp, this lamp, what a lamp. <laughs> I, $14.99. This is a big lamp. This thing is super heavy. I think I almost hurt my back uh, lifting this lamp. But look at that pink color. Look at that texture. It's incredible. The only thing I'm unsure about is the, the twisty kind of um, motif on the front. It's a little bit 80s. I don't know when this lamp um, was made. There's no markings on it. It's vintage for sure. I believe that it has the original lampshade, which is super cool. And the pink is just, the pink is epic. Uh, so I was stoked to find it. Uh, I've already cleaned it up. You'll see later on in the video, I'm gonna clean it up. I'm going to style it up and then let you guys be the judge. Let me know, please, if you would have thrifted in it, if you, if you would have passed. I did find this uh, other really cool lamp, which I passed on because that's not really my style, but I thought it was really cool and neat. So I hope someone else went and picked it up. And then obviously a quick stop in to the mugs. I found these beautiful hand-painted mugs from Korea, but look at the price, look at the price. It was, I don't know if I'm gonna show it to the camera well enough, but $5.99 for two. That's just too much, I'm sorry, but no, that's, it's too much for a mug. I'm sure I could have sold it for more, but it just, I just can't do it. Sometimes I just don't buy things out of principle. And then um, I found a, a, some interesting art 
actually on this thrift trip. I did not end up picking up one piece, not this one. This ended up just being a, a framed, you know, picture from a, a book type of thing, but nice Canadiana. I got the grain elevators, so some prairie art. I found this is super cool, very vintage. Missing the back, um, but I thought that was a really neat, like high gloss lacquered classic 80s frame. I think it's 80s, 70s. This is another piece of uh, local history, some Canadiana. That's the police, Calgary police station from, uh, I think it says 1900. Um, and this one I, I passed on as well. If there had been more color in it, I might have picked it up, but I'm sure someone else will definitely pick that up, uh, especially someone who collects, you know, any local, local history. Um, and then this here, this I ended up getting, so um, I don't know a lot about it yet. I haven't really researched too much, but I did take a quick cruise down Google Lane and uh, it is worth some money and I like the color. So I think someone's going to buy that. I've had some good luck selling art lately on uh, Facebook Marketplace. And um, this candlestick, I ended up putting it in the cart for a while. It took a little ride in the cart for a bit, took a break from the shelf, but I ended up putting it back eventually. It just didn't make the cut. This guy um, was cool, really heavy stone um, candle holder, tea light holder. I kind of regret not getting that. I feel like if it was had been a little bit cheaper, I would have got it, but um, it didn't make the cut today. So hopefully someone else picked it up. This is kind of a cool like 80s vase if you're into that. Not really my style, but really neat. I did see some interesting vases today and I ended up picking up one. I think you'll see here soon. Oh yeah, these ones, these were modern. So I didn't end up getting them, but they were a good price. I mean, regular price is 30 bucks on these. A little bit of damage, but I felt like for a different house than mine, I think they would be really cool. Like I could see that actually going really well in like my aunt and uncle's place. Now that I'm looking at it again, maybe that could have been a good gift to have given them, you know, for Christmas, when I show up for Christmas dinner, but oh well, I didn't get it. <laughs> uh, this this uh, little guy here was cool. I didn't end up getting it. Um, I'm having a little regrets. <laughs> I'm having some regrets now as I watch it back. And this guy I got, this guy was so, was really pretty. So I picked him up. Nice, like, pot, pottery, I guess, um, with a beautiful design. And if you guys have made it this far and you are enjoying the video, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos and uh, give this video a like. And it really helps me out. And I did find these vintage um, macrame plant hangers. Uh, this was this was like that kind of white um, plasticky material. I'm sure you're familiar with it. I I it's not really my thing. I like natural uh, fibers, and I'm looking for this exact type of thing. So I ended up getting the the natural fiber one, and I have a. A plan as to where I'm going to put that in my dining room that I'm just redoing right now. So I have to find the right pot for it and get a plant going in there. But I'm pretty excited about about that find. I I'm not too sure like how vintage it is or anything, but um, regardless, it'll look cool in my dining room. So I picked it up, and that one's going to be for me. This was really neat. So this guy is um, like a burl, a wood burl that someone has turned into a, I'm assuming a candle, a candle holder. At least that's what I'm going to be using it for. Um, but I thought it was really beautiful and natural. I will probably keep this one. Um, I have such a hard time letting them go. <laughs> that's my problem. I get it and then I want to keep it. But eventually I will probably sell that and pass it on. It was a little bit pricey. I felt like at $6.99, but um, you have to appreciate, you know, the work that went into making something like that. And it is a piece of art, handmade, um, the natural wood. So I decided it was worth it. So I picked it up and uh, sacrificed, I sacrificed this frame. 
I didn't get this frame. I looked at it for a while. It was, it spent some time in the cart. It went for a little ride with me, but I ended up putting it back. It just needed too much like polishing. So it's silver plated brass. And uh, I thought it was cool. I thought it was really vintage, but it just seemed like it was going to be work for me. Uh, and so I didn't want that work. <laughs> so I, I left it for someone else to find. I'm sure someone will pick that up because it's kind of cool. But yeah, it went for a little spin and then it, it got reshelved. And coming up here. Coming up here, you'll find <laughs> you'll find me find this little guy, and this kind of made the thrift shop trip so worth it. I think he's the cutest thing. I've never seen one like this at the thrift store. Apparently, these are very collectible. They're super cute, just little porcelain figures, and then they have a little pocket in the back where I'm assuming like people put a like maybe a dish cloth or something like for their kitchen in the back there or a plant so I think either would be cute this guy also was must have been from the same collection because these are very unusual that they would be there they're made in Korea um, but I didn't get that one I think there was something wrong with it or I didn't like it so I left it so it has to go home without its without its buddy. Um, and then here, I'm just gonna start unpacking everything. at some of these items in more detail so starting off with the brass um, candle holder so this didn't actually feature in the thrifting videos I'm not too sure why um, but uh, I was really happy with this one so this was five bucks and super heavy larger size um, candle holder so I've seen a lot of the smaller ones lately, but um, I haven't seen one of this size. And I also found this vase, which you saw uh, previously in the video. Um, this one is just really beautiful and it's neutral. It has a really nice nature kind of pattern on it. And I thought that somebody would really, really like this. Um, it would be really nice with some stems you know, coming out as nice uh, spring, spring decor or even winter. So it has a nice like gray color to it. And just going back to that candle holder too from before, I actually saw a stamp on it on the side and it actually says 1961. So um, kind of cool to know, you know, how old it is. And then this 
cutie. <laughs> okay, what kind of animal is this? Can somebody please let me know? Is this like a a teddy bear, a monkey, a mouse? <laughs> The more I look at him, the more I, I don't really know what he is, but I like him a lot and only $2.99. And so I feel like this is going to sell really well. I feel like someone's really going to love him for either a plant holder or in your kitchen. So I'm excited about that. And really great condition too, like no chips and it's such a delicate little piece, so light. And the embroidery kit, so still stoked about this. Uh, for $2.99, I'm really happy about this one. I feel like this could sell for $25, bucks, maybe $30 bucks online. Um, our Etsy shop is up and running. I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can check it out. And uh, we actually just made our first uh, three sales on our Etsy shop which is really cool. So in a future video, I'll let you know kind of what's been selling from the Etsy shop and give you some updates. Later on in this video too, I actually am going to give you an update on what sold um, as well. So this book, the Pillows, Pillows, Pillows <laughs> book, um, this one is, like I said, a stocking stuffer for my mom. She might even already have this. She has like all the sewing books known to man, but, um, really good price, like a dollar 49. So just make a cute little stocking stuffer. We're doing thrift miss this year for Christmas. So everyone's gifting from the thrift store and nothing's brand new. Nothing can be brand new. Um, so that's been really, really fun. Kind of trying to track down little gifts. And then, yeah, I think it says 1998 there. Copyright 1998. Um, this little guy here, love, the more I look at it, I really think that, like, especially for someone who's, like, a rustic kind of look to their house they're going for, I feel like this would be really, really cool. And obviously unique, right? Because this is a handmade item, so you're not going to find this in anyone else's house. And I just love how it has like those raw wood bits kind of sticking out of it. It's just super interesting and unique. And my little um, plant holder, my macrame. So hopefully this will look the way I want it to look. I will show you guys how it ended up turning out in another video, but I'm trying to, you know, decorate my house with stuff that's been thrifted. I've been doing that for years, years. Um, and it takes a long, <clears throat> takes a long time to get your house looking the way you want it. And then um, I'm just gonna show you these other thrift finds that I had from an, a previous thrift trip that I was not filming at. So this is a Blue Mountain Pottery piece. Um, so especially if you're Canadian, you'll know exactly what these are. You've seen them before in your, <laughs> In your grandma's house um, they're everywhere they are like a very popular canadian uh, pottery company from the 60s um, this little guy was a buck which is a crazy good price i found this at wins so that's women in need uh, thrift store it's a small small little thrift store near near to me and i just popped in there quickly when i was out for lunch and i scored I got that little uh, that little dog, the Cocker Spaniel or Setter or whatever that dog is. And then I found this cute um, cheese board tray. So this was a dollar. Actually, I think the, the dog was $2 because I remember spending $3. And then this guy was one. So I found this at the bottom of a bin of stuffed animals. No joke. I was looking through the stuffed animals, looking for a cabbage patch as I always do. And what is at the bottom of the stuffed animal bin is this beautiful, gorgeous tray. Um, so I scored on that. And then here uh, you guys can see in a little bit more detail the piece of art that I picked up. So I will let you know in a future video what I ended up selling this uh, for. But this is called the Aquarium. I can't remember the name of the artist off the top of my head. Um, but... Uh, 
sell, they sell for, um, quite a lot more than what I paid. So we'll see how this one ends up going. Um, at Valley Village, kind of the standard price for, you know, art of this size is about 17 to $18. So it is kind of an investment. It's a little bit of a risk, right? You know, you don't know, you know, if this is going to sell, but I think it will, especially with this frame. It's a beautiful, like gold frame, um, with black on the sides and a beautiful blue mat. I think it's really cool. And here is the camel wool blanket that I picked up uh, to make my coat with. So let me know, um, especially if there are any sewers here on the, the channel, um, let me know what you would do with this coat. Would you keep that fringe part as, as part of your coat? Like, let, give me some tips because I am not a sewer and I plan on doing this with some expert help from, <laughs> from my mother. Let me know what you think. And then this, this is what, uh, sold, um, this week actually. So it's a framed piece of art, uh, M Michelle Delacroix, I believe is the artist. And this I picked up for, I think it was around 17, 18 bucks and I sold it for 40. Um, and you'll also see this, this is a thrift find. So I've been using this to style up some pictures um, it's absolutely beautiful, like rug hooking. And I scored this. Uh, they did not um, know what they had. <laughs> so I was able to, I don't remember what I paid, but I, it was one of those thrift store finds where like you see it and like you throw it in your cart and like run to the till <laughs> before anybody figures out. <laughs> you feel like you're like stealing. It's such a good deal. Um, so I just think it's amazing and I love it. I, one day I'm going to hang it, but right now I've been using it just to like, um, you know, as like a rug, you know, kind of to stage some of the bigger items like this lamp. So here it is in all her glory. So love her or hate her. She's pink and I think she's incredible. I, I love her. I think someone's going to really, really like this lamp. And at this point right now, I'm kind of realizing that I haven't tested it. <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking, oh boy, I just spent 15 bucks. I know you can get it, re get them rewired. Ooh, look at that. Do you see that? Ooh, it's seen some days. It's seen some days. So I'm going to get that cleaned up for you guys and uh, <laughs> styled up and plugged in. This is the plug. That is very old. You can kind of tell from the plugs. So I don't know when, where this lamp came from. I don't know how old it is, but I do know it's vintage. I'm going to get it cleaned up for you and hopefully turn it on. You'll see. <music> so happy. Um, this is it styled up. Let me know what you think. I have some pink and blue accents in my fireplace living room and I think it's super cool in there. <laughs> I, it's tempting to keep it, but, um, I have those little blue lamps that I shared with you last time that I love, love, love those twisted lamps. So Oh, and I'm going to show you another find that I uh, styled up. So I found this bronze pitcher. I don't know if you remember it from a previous video. 
but I ended up using it to hold my kitchen utensils. So it turned out really well. And here's another styled find. So this is the Blue Mountain Pottery Dog. And I just placed him on my entryway teak table next to my other dog, which is a little brass corgi. And I think it makes like a really cute scene. Thanks for watching. And once again, you can find us on Instagram at bluehousevintage.yyc. And we'll see you in the next video. Also, please subscribe to our channel. We're a new channel, so it helps us out tremendously. And give this video a big thumbs up. See you soon.